Hi everyone, um, thanks for coming today. Um, I'm going to share with you a little bit more about tag security, what we're doing, you know, the different um, efforts that we have, what we've been working on, all the cool stuff that we have. Um, and you know, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how we can get involved, um, you know, what are some of the security challenges that we're facing today as a community and as, as um, at larger industry. Uh, my name is Brandon. I am a co-chair for Tech Security. Uh, my co-speaker, Andreas, unfortunately, um, something came up and he can't be here today. So I'm going to go quickly through the slides. Uh, since this is a smaller group, I kind of want to try and do a little bit more engagement. So if you, you, know, you want to ask questions, focus down on specific areas, we can do that. Um, so just so quickly, you know, who, what, when, where, why kind of things. Um, so I'm going to start with who are we? Um, we are the technical advisory group um, for, um, for the CNCF TOC for security. Uh, and our task here is really to, you know, to aid the TOC in terms of like, you know, helping um, strengthen the security posture of CNCF projects. Um, so we do both you know, reviewing our projects, kind of helping the TOC understand certain security projects. Uh, we also help identify gaps in the ecosystem uh, and try and you know, we write papers, uh, do education, uh, and you know, bring people together and you know, start fostering those collaborations. Um, we basically do cl everything cloud native. Um, cloud native security is a um, uh, work with many meanings because most of the things today are cloud native, so cloud native security. Um, does take up like a, a lot of space. There's a lot for us to like dig through and, and, and talk about. Um, we want to help in the end developers meet uh, security requirements uh, and we also want to be able to kind of get to where we want to be in terms of auditing and compliance. So the group generally works on GitHub. Uh, there's a GitHub link there. Um, we are made out of um, professionals, enthusiasts, people in the community. Uh, we like the fresh perspective that everyone brings to the table. Um, so this is our leadership team. So if you see um, anyone or fellow community members, um, say hi. Um, myself there with my fellow co-chairs, Andrew Martin and Aratna. Uh, we have tech leads, Andreas, um, Ash and Pushka. And we have our newly nominated tech leads, um, Michael Lieberman, Marina Moore and Raga Shri. Um, we also have our assessment facilitator, Matthew, uh, and Raga Shri is also our community manager. And of course, we have our co-chair emeritus, Emily Fox, who is now our TLC liaison. So what do we do? There are two parts that um, go into what we do. One of them is like creating and breaking things, right? This is where we say, okay, what can we do to help the community? What can we do to kind of like push uh, the boundary of security um, for organizations. And that is creating a breaking. And another aspect of that is also, um, you know, things we've done in the white paper. So we, we just launched earlier this week, the V2 uh, white paper, supply chain, security, um, factory reference architecture, um, and a bunch of all these. So I, I'm gonna just dive deeper into a couple of these. If you have questions, we can talk about it later. Um, so the first one that I, I want to highlight is the V2 white paper. Um, this was being worked on by the community in the past six months. Um, it's a revision too of the original white paper that we launched, I think about two years ago now. Um, and what, what we've done is we've really updated it with some of the newer topics. Um, we also added some interesting ideas in which people were you know, struggling to understand some of the concepts. We provide that framework to them. So for example, uh, one of the things that was added to this paper is the mapping to SSDF. So if you've heard of the, um, the NIST soft, Secure Software Development Framework, um, that was a document that was written by NIST, um, partially to kind of provide some guidance in terms of if in the US we have the executive order on security and the SSDF is there to kind of fulfill like some guidance in the area. Um, so as part of that, you know, we do some mapping to say that, okay, if you want to fulfill which um, parts of the white paper, fulfill which uh, particular requirements or controls in the mapping. 
Um, so that's one that, that's very useful. We have um, a whole new section on ransomware. You know, we talk about what's ransomware. We talk about ransom cloud. You know, how do you protect yourself against ransomware? Um, and also, we have a new section on EU compliance. Um, so a lot of cool things in the new V2 of our paper. Uh, check it out. As usual, these things are living documents. So if you read the paper and you see something that's not in there, something that you're really, really interested, it's like, okay, we need to cover, um, I don't know, like micro VMs or something like that. You know, we need to cover um, confidential computing deeper. Um, we can add it to the white paper. Um, whenever we get kind of like a backlog of topics that we see come up, we, we then decide, okay, you know, here's the t now is the time to do V3. Um, as V2 launches, also a, a couple of cool things that have happened is we have now an audiobook version available of the V1. <laughs> so if you like to just put on something um, in the morning, just listen to it, we have an audiobook that's available. Um, we also have translations of the original white paper in both simplified Chinese and Brazilian Portuguese. Um, and these are kind of important um, pieces of work that the community has done because, you know, for example, in in Portugal, you can't use the document unless it's written in um, Portuguese. So that's why we had like members of the community do the translation. Um, we have a Spanish translation in progress um, that's being currently led by Carol, one of our contributors. Um, it, we are still looking for more contributors there. So if you're interested in kind of helping to translate the white paper, um, you know. All the issue numbers are on the slide, so just click in, um, put your notes there, say that you want to you wanna help out. Another thing that we've been dealing a lot with is um, supply chain um, security, right? So back a couple, of, like a year, a year and a half ago, we first published the best practices white paper, which talks about, okay, what should you do in order to get a secure supply chain? Um, your Ryan and company here have done a, a great talk uh, during the security con talking about that's how they used it and that's how they mapped it into 3M and kind of like pushed it out through the organization. Um, so the second step of this is that we were working, now it's in progress, it's actually done. So I'm gonna show you what we have is um, the secure software reference architecture paper. Um, so this was just launched 30 minutes ago. So, so um, yeah, we, 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 we had a lot of things churning in the prep line, so it was, it was, uh, it's gonna, it's a very eventful week. Um, so the Secure Software Factory paper talks about, it provides a reference architecture. It tells you uh, what are the aspects um, of a Secure Software Factory, how should they work together. It talks about it in terms of concepts. We don't really dive deep into uh, oh, this is what technology you should use and blah, 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 because, you know, these things are going to change. Uh, so the idea is we provided a framework, we've provided the language so that people can communicate with each other, so that people can, you know, reason about what exactly is this project doing, right? Because a lot of people have projects that say, I solve supply chain security, right? But it's essentially, they are solving part of supply chain security. So it provides a way to communicate about that. Um, we have a couple of authors, co-authors here in the room, contributors. Um, so. Um, if, if you're gonna be sticking around, we can chat with that. Uh, as a side note, we, there is a project that was built with the reference architecture in mind um, called SSF, which will be renamed to Fresca. Um, but so I have it linked here. This is actual um, code implementation using different, um, different projects, uh, which is part of the open SSF, uh, but all the concepts are all tied from um, the Secure Software Factory paper. Another quick thing to mention, we have in this controls mapping, uh, this was phase one that's now completed and it was launched earlier this week as well. Um, basically maps everything in the white paper um, to the NIST control. So if you're looking to um, target certain NIST controls in your products or implementation, uh, you can kind of look at this and say, okay, this is how I can do it. Uh, we do have a phase two that's coming up and you know, part of being cloud native and cloud native security is that we want to have automation, right? We, we, we've understood that we can't do security manually. And so the next step of this is to create containerless compliance. And so one thing that we're looking at is OSCO. Um, and the way we get there is to first figure out you know, what the evidence that we have together, how do we actually um, 
audit these controls automatically. And so the phase two of this is going to come up soon. It's going to talk about how can we automate all these things, and hopefully, you know, phase three further along will be implementing that framework. Uh, we also have a serverless white paper that's currently in uh, RSD. Uh, talks a little bit about serverless, more a focus on the function side. Um, you know, what are the unique security considerations they have to deal with in terms of access control and management. Um, also talks a little bit about you know what what goes on in terms of you know your segregation or your your risk transference with your cloud provider. Uh, this is RFC. Um, I think I forgot to put the link in here, but um, I will update the slides. Cool. Um, so what else do we do besides writing papers? Um, so we we engage with other communities within the CNCF as well as outside the CNCF. Um, so we uh, we talk to the Kubernetes policy working group, SIG security. We have uh, cross members. One of our TLs, Pushka, is a member of both. Um, Cloud Security Alliance. We talk to them pretty often, as well as Open SSF, um, Salsa, as it um, regards to you know the supply chain and reference architecture. Um, another thing we do is we interact with other CNCF projects. So if you are a CNCF project and you're thinking, okay, I need to do security, like I'm, I have a security project and I kind of want to kind of reach into the community, find end users, get some feedback on what should I do, how should I make security better. Um, this is something that we do. We do something called Security Pals where we have a um, one community member kind of guide the project along, like how do I create a self-assessment, what are the security considerations I have to think about. And we have self-assessment and joint reviews, which are uh, analysis of the security posture of the project. So this usually comes in the project pipeline, although we encourage projects to just come up and do it. Uh, you get a very, very well, well fleshed out document at the end of it that says, if you're interested in using this project, and you want, you're thinking about security, this is all you have to know. Threat model, what are the considerations you need? And really, it decreases the barrier entry um, for groups to just pick up the project and use them. Okay. So, this was just what I talked about. Um, we have two items, uh, two, two projects that are coming up for this. Uh, we're looking for a security power for Flux multi tenancy. Um, so, for those that are not familiar, Flux is a uh, multi-tenant multi Kubernetes multi-cluster deployment system. Um, and so, so one of the things they're doing in graduation is they have this new multi-tenancy um, proposal. And part of that is um, we want to be able to make sure that that's good. So we, we are looking for security power for that. Um, we also have the captain joint review, which will be coming up soon as well. So another thing that um, the group has been working on is an event called Global Security Vulnerability Summit. So I'm pitching an event for another, <laughs> uh, another conference. This is going to be in, uh, in June uh, next month in Austin together with the Open Source Security Summit. Um, and you know, what we are thinking about here is you know, how do we solve, you know, we always talk about Log4j, Log4Shell, um, you know, all dirty cow, am I affected by this vulnerability, right? How do I manage this vulnerability? Or even like, how do I report this vulnerability? How do I get all the data sources? And how do I make sense out of that, right? This is where we see efforts like VEX. Uh, we see efforts like OSB uh, coming out. So this event hopes to gather um, the community together, talk about it. You know, we have the governments involved, certs involved. Um, and vulnerability databases involved. So that's, that's going to be a good forum. Um, and also, you know, we're looking to um, future topics, like okay, how, how do you do analysis now? Like it, assuming that I have the graph all together, right, of all the information, uh, is there any analysis that I can do, differential analysis to find certain classes of bugs or, you know, try and pick them out before they happen? Um, two efforts that are currently going on with uh, supply chain security now, um, post-reference architecture. Um, the first is, you know, obviously S-bombs is a, it's a very hot topic now, um, but there's, there's some um, gaps in terms of like, what does S-bomb mean in certain contexts, right? 
when you have a piece of uh, you have a package or you have a software, you know, S1 is pretty well defined, right? You're defining what's in that package or what's in that binary. Um, but when you talk about cloud native and you talk about microservices, you talk about software as a service, infrastructure as a service, what does it mean to have an S bomb, right? If I'm hosting a service on, you know, a software as a service, is my S bomb the Python code that runs on it? Is it the container that it runs in? Is it the VM that it's running in? The Kubernetes cluster that it's running in? Bare metal machine that it's running in? And so as you can see, kind of like, there is that, there is that kind of um, open questions where, where, where we, we, as a community, we have to come together and provide some guidance for this, right? I think there's going to be trade-offs. It's probably going to be, you know, your practical guidance that we can provide there. Uh, another part of this is, you know, it, the S1 community and supply chain community um, kind of have been going on in their own t in their own tracks, and we want to tie a lot of this together because generation of S bombs and the use of S bombs, right? We we talk about generation of S bombs, and great, we have them, but do I know they're from the correct place or do they were generated accurately? Or you know, it's can I trust this S bomb? And it's the same with can I trust this binary? If I'm using the S bomb as a basis to make my security decisions, I have to trust the S bomb as much as I trust the binary. Um, so that's where you see like a lot of overlaps with the supply chain practices, and that's where we see kind of cross pollination there. Um, also, there's a lot of um, big open questions in the industry like distribution of S bombs, which have not really been talked that much about. Um, another thing that we're looking to do is to apply the the best practices and the reference architecture to CNCF projects, right? So um, the idea there is to to run an instance of the reference architecture. Uh, there's the project for OpenSSF, and now you know pick a few CNCF projects to say, okay, we are going to try and bootstrap you into this. We're going to say, okay, let's you know we're going to figure out how this works, how we can get there, and you know hopefully based on that those proof of concepts try and scale up and kind of, you know, make this a thing that CNCF can do, you know. We always talk about, we need to put money into security and open source security, but like no one knows how to use the money. <laughs> um, or we, we don't know how to efficiently do it. Um, so that's the idea, and I think it hopefully also can influence the OpenSSF Alpha Mega project where we say, okay, look, we've provided some uh, ideas that we, have been able to execute in the open uh, in the CNCF context. Uh, how can we take this and bring it to other projects that may not um, have the kind of same kind of practices or the same kind of um, tooling and 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 pipeline? Cool. So, if any of these interests you, um, that we have multiple avenues that you can get in contact with us. We have a mailing list. Um, like I said, everything that we do is GitHub. Um, everything is issues. Anything that we talk about goes into issues. Um, we do meet every week on Wednesday. Uh, right now it's 10 a.m. UTC minus seven. I think that's um, probably about 7 p.m. this time. Um, but I think what we are we are thinking about doing as well is we're thinking about starting up an EU um, EU meeting. So we may kind of bounce between those two. Um, if you're interested in hosting one of these um, tech meetings, uh, please do contact us as well. We're looking for people that really, you know, you, you want to drive, we are looking for people that want to drive the community here as well. Because, you know, we can set up a meeting, but, you know, really it is the people that are there, that are on the ground, that really provide the context um, for the work that's done. Um, we have a roadmap as well as we are on Twitter, so you can follow us, so you get um, news on like the different papers that we are publishing, the different efforts that are going on, so you can get involved. And yeah, that's all we have for today. Thank you. So we don't have any questions uh, online, but if you have any questions in the room, I'll run over, raise your hand, and I'll run over with the microphone. <laughs> oh, so I, I saw um, a presentation yesterday talking about the different types of S-bombs and maybe some relational links between them and how they could come with packages of evidence and other things. So I noticed you had a line that says, 
give guidance on how people should be using, consuming these desk bombs, because we don't want to just generate them and have people go, oh, thanks, and check a box, right? Yeah. They should be yeah. machine readable and other things. So any, any efforts along those lines that you're working on? So um, from the perspective of the CNCF, um, we are trying to start that up. Uh, there are other efforts that are going around in the community. So there's the s bomb Coalition, um, which is part of the cybersecurity group um, that's providing some guidance. We are going to have a workshop. So we have, um, at the risk of self-promoting, um, <laughs> uh, we have this, no, it's not this one. Um, So this is part of the the um, the coalition group. Um, we just published a policy paper a week ago. Um, can't seem to find it now, but um, we we published a policy policy paper about a week or two ago. Um, so this talks about okay as a as a this is more for like NIST um, OMB to provide guidance. Uh, so high level, you know, what are the problems that we have to work on? Too many standards. Um, distribution is a problem. Um, you know, what does S bomb mean? I think those are also kind of like three of the main takeaways. Um, and then we have kind of these specific technical problems, which is you know storage and distribution of S bombs. Uh, using the S-bombs to answer the security question, um, you know, implementation of S-bomb throughout the ecosystem, as well as, um, you know, lack of clarity of what S-bombs mean. Uh, and, you know, SPX, for example, we have a, um, so within the SPX community, we have a build profile group. We have a defects group. So we're we looking at kind of like these different pockets of, of, um, of uh, documents and how they link together. But I think eventually um, what we're seeing in SPDX 3.0 is like how to bring all these things together. Um, so yeah, I think the S1 coalition is a good group. Uh, from the how to consume this part of it, there's also the back to working group, which I think is, is a great one to be at. Um, that's really, you know, how do I take S1 plus TV data plus back data equals policy engine and action. So they're looking at the, the action part of it, right? So VEX talks about affected, not affected. Not affected means zero, nothing to do. And if you're affected, they provide guidance on like what you have to do or how are you affected. So that, that really ties in uh, to your consumption question, right? How do we eventually get, get to, how, how do we take action on these things? Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Hi, um, I was just wondering if there'd been any activity in tag security and considering the use of trusted execution environments and the impacts on whether, and maybe this is something we can talk more and more about later, yeah. but I was just curious if there'd been anything so far. Yeah, yeah, so, so we, we talked about this and like, I remember like about, this is about two years ago, you know, Ava, Ava was coming and, and talking about it and obviously I, I, know, I know the work that, that you all do with the, the confidential containers. Um, uh, in my previous life. <laughs> um, so we, we have a couple of interesting use cases. I think one of them obviously is the regulatory use cases. I think we have a very interesting set of UK use cases with identity. Uh, I think the Spire community is kind of looking at that. Um, initially, they're looking at SGX, how, how do they um, securely provide identity into uh, the microservice, right? I think that's, that's a very big use case for us. Um, I think the, the, the isolation use cases, we are also looking at in supply chain. So this is something that we talked about in the supply chain reference architecture paper. Um, but we didn't include that much in this one because the technology wasn't really there yet. So we, we couldn't really talk about it that much. Um, so I think there, there are valid use cases. I think it'll be, it'll be nice. I know that you all have done a lot of great work. Um, I think we, it'll be good, nice to share the community. Um, you know, we can also help talk about some use cases, maybe write, write a blog post or something about, here are some use cases and then kind of spread it within the community, get some more feedback and maybe get more users around that. Yeah. That sounds good. I mean, we're, 
keen from the confidential containers side to clarify our use cases, but also to relate what we're exploring back to the documents and, and the work from the tag security. So yeah, yeah. I can follow up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Go, goes both ways. <laughs> Hi, Brenton. A quick hey. question from my side. Um, it's also a bit in the contrast of confidential containers. Do you have ideas, use cases to use um, HSMs, okay. hardware security modules, um, specifically local hardware security modules at scale to improve security, um, key management, or go, go even into, and let me say, secure keys and wrapped keys? Uh, I. I didn't quite get all of that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the HSMs, um, scaling key management. Exactly. So lo local HSMs, not local uh, specifically HSM. talking about network attached HSMs, but uh, specifically uh, locally. So, that are available so to, for example, for containers exclusively. Is this kind of like like you have a Jamalto HSM and like you use PKCS 11? For example, for payment rate um, transactions and key management. Yeah, I think we, we do talk about HSMs in the cloud native security white paper. I, I don't think we um, dive deep into the different um, deployment models of HSM. Although I think that's interesting, right? Because essentially you're you're creating your threat model based on the the uh, the authorization of the key and who has access to it, right? Um, so I think that'll be interesting. That'll be interesting thing to to discuss. Um, and you know, I think we can add we can add more guidance. And I don't know whether there would be. I guess there will be specific recommendations on like when you want a local HSM versus a remote HSM. Uh, and it's also like you know the security usability uh, lever as well. Right? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Brandon, can you describe to everybody what it's like being in a leadership position within Tag Security? You see a lot of things. <laughs> no, being being um, being a leader in Tag Security is, is 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 very great. You get to talk with a lot of people. You get to see different perspectives of security. Uh, you obviously get to work with a great community. Um, that that is also like, especially in open source, you learn a lot about how open source ecosystems work. Like how do you get contributors? How do you keep contributors? What are the factors that matters? And then kind of like, for, for me, it, it's, it's benefited me in a way that like the way I operate in open source is a lot more um, more intentional. Like I understand, okay, you know, this, these are what matters in open source community. This is how we get there. Here are all the factors. And so like, um, as as like you know, initially from contributor to project leads to tech leads and to now chair, you kind of like see the different levels of it. I feel like it's a it's a very good experience um, and also great networking. <laughs> and I know the security reviews are extra critical within the CNCF because it helps projects prepare for those code audits. And I can see that there's not a lot of security experts within the ecosystem. What is the biggest challenge when performing a security review? Is it finding people to assist, or is it the technical part of that review? It, it, is, it is exactly the point. Like uh, finding people to assist with the security reviews is something that um, some, something that has been difficult, right? Um, we we already have tried to scale down. Like we, we noticed that like you know people that come into open source that want to work on a specific project. Attention span is like three to four weeks, so <laughs> we scaled down like the, the review to two weeks. You know, it's really bite sized It's really simple, um, and we, we are looking for, for for people. And you know, whether you're super deep, you know, a security review can be going deep into okay, let's take a look at you know what passwords they're using um, to to kind of let's look at how they are handling security events, uh, how they you know do they have a CD, CI/CD pipeline. You know, what are the are they generating the S bombs and things like that? And so it I think it's a good um 
gateway project to get things involved in the tech. Um, I know that was the first project I worked on. This was initially, we were starting up these reviews for like in total and things like that. Um, I would encourage everyone, you know, it's a very low, um, um, low commitment way to like get into the tech, you know, learn about a new project they're interested in. Um, and that's what, that's what I did, right? I, I needed to work on, um, I needed to work on Spire for one of my work projects. So I was like, okay, I'll do the Spire review. And that way you get, you know, you learn about the project, you get direct access to maintainers, right? <laughs> so, and then you make friends with them, right? You, you create the connections there. So yeah, I would encourage everyone to do that. Um, I would say, you know, put it, put it on one of the security review issues or, you know, you can contact any of the leadership directly and say that I'm interested in doing X, Y, Z. You know, that may not be something right now, but when we, when we, something comes up, we can, we can talk to you and, you know, get you involved in what you, what you want to do. Yeah, let me, let me show you how, what our usual process is, you know. <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna, if you are interested in doing something, you just hit new issue. Or if you wanna do a presentation, new issue, get started, fill in all the details, uh, proposal, suggestion, if, if you, you want to do something with the group, um, you know, you can go to here, it, oops, sorry. Look at all the assessments. Yeah, go to this, scroll down, command, and then you're set. <laughs> yeah, um, cool, yeah. So, any more questions? Thank you. And I don't think we have any more online, so I think that it's, that's it for questions. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>